Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on more trigonometric equations. So in the previous video, we talked about how to solve trigonometric equations using fundamental identities. In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve trigonometric equations with multiple angles. So let's talk about example two. Solutions to a trigonometric equation on an interval. Solve the following trigonometric equations on the given interval. So number one, we're going to solve the equation cosine of theta plus one is equal to sine of theta, and the values for theta are between zero and two pi, including theta equals zero, but not including two pi. So this time we notice that there's two different trigonometric functions in this equation. We have the sine function of theta and also the cosine function of theta. However, each of the functions are raised to the first power. They're both linear terms. So we can't actually replace sine of theta or cosine of theta to be in terms of the other function using the Pythagorean identity because that was sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. Each of these terms are linear terms. The only thing that we can do is take both sides of the equation and square them. So let's take the left side of the equation, cosine of theta plus one, and let's square the left side of the equation, and we'll take sine of theta, the right side of the equation, and square it as well. And so we have cosine of theta plus one in parentheses, all squared, that means cosine of theta plus one times itself, cosine of theta plus one, and the right side of the equation is sine of theta squared, so that'll be sine squared of theta. So if we want to simplify the left side of the equation, we need to use the FOIL method, the binomial times binomial. We have cosine of theta times cosine of theta, that will be cosine squared of theta, cosine of theta times one, and also cosine of theta times one again, for the inside and outside two terms, you get two times cosine of theta after you add like terms, and then you have one times one will give you one. So the left side of the equation will be cosine squared of theta plus two times cosine of theta plus one, and the right side of the equation will be sine squared of theta. So now we have an equation that we talked about in the previous video. We have the sine function that's being squared on one side of the equation, and we also have the cosine function that's being squared on the left side of the equation, and notice that cosine of theta is raised to the first power. So we're gonna replace the sine squared of theta to be in terms of the cosine squared of theta function. So we're gonna replace sine squared of theta to be in terms of the cosine function using the Pythagorean identity. So remember, the Pythagorean identity said that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. If you wanna replace sine squared of theta to be in terms of cosine of theta, you need to take sine squared of theta and isolate it on one side of the equation. So subtract cosine squared of theta to the right side of the equation. So now sine squared of theta will be one subtract cosine squared of theta. So that will be our new right side of the equation. So the left side of the equation will be cosine squared of theta plus two times cosine of theta plus one. But then the right side of the equation, sine squared of theta will become one subtract cosine squared of theta. So now the entire equation is in terms of the cosine function. So let's move all terms to one side of the equation so that one side of the equation is equal to zero. So let's subtract one on the left side of the equation and also add cosine squared of theta to the left side of the equation as well. So you have cosine of theta plus cosine squared of theta. There'll be two cosine squared of theta plus two cosine of theta was already on the left hand side of the equation. And then the right side of the equation will now be zero because there are no terms remaining. So you have two times cosine squared of theta plus two times cosine of theta is equal to zero. Notice that both of these terms have a cosine of theta in common and also a two in common. So you can factor out a two times cosine of theta from both terms on the left-hand side of the equation. So you have two times cosine of theta factored out. You'll have a one from the second term and you also have a cosine of theta from the first term. So two times cosine of theta times the quantity cosine of theta plus one is equal to zero. And now you have a factor on the left-hand side of the equation and the product was equal to zero. At least one of the factors must be equal to zero now. So you have two times cosine of theta is equal to zero. The factor is on the outside of the parentheses. And then the factor that's inside the parentheses was one plus cosine of theta that can also be equal to zero. So if you solve each of these basic trigonometric equations for the trigonometric function cosine of theta, you have cosine of theta is equal to zero and also cosine of theta is equal to negative one. So let's find out what are the angles theta where cosine of theta is equal to zero. That would be where the angle is pi over two or also three pi over two because that's where the cosine function is equal to zero. And so you can either have the angle pi over two plus some multiple of two pi for the general solution. So theta can be pi over two plus two pi k where k is an integer or theta can be three pi over two plus some multiple of two pi. So theta can be three pi over two plus two pi k, where k is an integer. That will solve the equation cosine of theta is equal to zero. However, if you want to solve the equation cosine of theta is equal to negative one, that's where the angle theta must be equal to pi. So you can have theta is equal to pi plus, again, some multiple of two pi because the period of the cosine function is two pi radians. And so theta can be pi plus two pi k, where k is an integer. This is the general solution to the trigonometric equation. Cosine of theta plus one is equal to sine of theta. However, since we're trying to find out all the values of theta that are between zero and two pi, including theta equals zero, we want to find out what are all the angles theta between zero and two pi that would actually solve this equation. Once we have the general solution, notice that if k is equal to zero, then you have theta is equal to pi over two. If k equals zero, you have theta equals three pi over two. And if k equals zero, you also have theta is equal to pi. So these are actually solutions between zero and two pi, pi over two, three pi over two, and also pi. 
However, if you check the solution theta equals 3 pi over 2 in the original equation, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is actually equal to 0, so the left-hand side of the equation will be 1, but the right-hand side of the equation, sine of 3 pi over 2, is actually negative 1. So the left-hand side of the equation is positive 1, the right side of the equation is negative 1. So theta equals 3 pi over 2 is actually an extraneous solution to this equation. It's not actually a solution because it doesn't check with the original equation. So the only solutions between 0 and 2 pi are theta equals pi over 2, because that's when k equals 0, and also theta equals pi, because that's where also where k equals 0. There are only two solutions to the equation, pi over 2 and pi. The reason why we had an extraneous solution to this equation is because we took both sides of the equation and squared both sides of the equation. That actually can introduce extraneous solutions, which occurred when theta was equal to 3 pi over 2 in this case. So let's try a similar problem. Number two, the equation is 1 subtract 2 times sine of theta is equal to cosine of 2 theta. And again, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, where theta can be equal to 0, but not equal to 2 pi. So we're going to solve this trigonometric equation. Well, notice on the right-hand side of the equation, you have cosine of 2 theta. That actually is involving a double angle of the cosine function. The left-hand side of the equation will stay the same, 1 subtract 2 times sine of theta. However, if we want the cosine of 2 theta to be involved with the sine function, we're going to use this double angle identity for the cosine of 2 theta. It's 1 subtract 2 sine squared of theta on the right-hand side of the equation. And so now the entire equation involves sine of theta. You have sine of theta, and you also have sine squared of theta. So let's move all the terms to one side of the equation so that one side of the equation is equal to 0. So let's subtract 1 to the left-hand side of the equation. So you have 1 subtract 1, that will be 0. But then you also have to add 2 sine squared of theta to move it to the left-hand side of the equation. So you have 2 sine squared of theta, subtract 2 sine of theta, and the right-hand side of the equation will be 0 because there are no terms remaining. And so now you have both terms on the left-hand side of the equation. They both involve 2 times sine of theta as a greatest common factor, or GCF. So that can be factored out, 2 sine theta, from both terms. You have a sine of theta left from the first term and you have a subtract 1 from the left over from the second term. And the right-hand side of the equation is still 0. So you have a product that's equal to 0. At least one of the factors must be equal to 0. So 2 times sine of theta is equal to 0, or sine of theta subtract 1 is equal to 0. So now let's try to solve for the sine function. You have 2 times sine of theta is equal to 0. That means sine of theta is equal to 0 after you divide both sides of the equation by 2. And if sine of theta subtract 1 is equal to 0, that means sine of theta is equal to 1. So let's find out what is the general solution, find out all the angles theta that actually will solve the equation sine of theta is equal to 0 and also sine of theta is equal to 1. If sine of theta is equal to 0, that means the angle theta can be 0 plus some multiple of 2 pi. So theta can be 0 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. Or the angle can also be pi, so theta can be pi plus some multiple of 2 pi. So theta can be pi plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. That will solve the equation sine of theta is equal to 0. However, if you want to solve the equation sine of theta is equal to 1, the only value where sine of theta is equal to 1 is where the angle theta is pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. So pi over 2 plus some multiple of 2 pi. So if theta is any one of these three different forms, it actually is a general solution to the trigonometric equation. 1 subtract 2 times sine of theta is equal to cosine of 2 theta. However, we want the angle between 0 and 2 pi, including theta equals 0. And so theta equals 0 occurs because whenever you let k be equal to 0, you get theta equals 0. So that's a solution in the interval 0 to 2 pi. If you let k equals 0 for this equation, theta equals pi plus 2 pi k. If you let k be 0, you get theta equals pi. That's also a solution between 0 and 2 pi. So theta equals pi is also a solution. And if you let theta be equal pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, where k equals 0, then you have theta equals pi over 2. That's also a solution between 0 and 2 pi. However, if you let k equals 1, that actually will be outside the interval. It will not be between 0 and 2 pi for the angle theta. So the only answers or the only solutions to this equation between 0 and 2 pi radians are the angles 0, pi, and pi over 2. These are the only three solutions to the equation between 0 and 2 pi radians. So now let's talk about solving equations with trigonometric functions of multiples of angles. When you're solving a trigonometric equation that involves functions of multiples of angles, we're going to first solve the equation for the multiple of an angle and then divide to solve for the angle. So in example 3, we're going to solve a trigonometric equation with a multiple of an angle. So solve the following trigonometric equations on the given intervals. So number one, we're going to solve the equation 2 times sine of 2 times theta is equal to negative square root 3. And again, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, where theta can be 0 but not equal to 2 pi. So this time you have a trigonometric equation that only involves a sine function. However, notice you have the sine function of a double angle. It's actually 2 times theta as the argument of the sine function. If we use the double angle identity for the sine function, we actually introduce the sine of theta and also cosine of theta. Because sine of 2 times theta is, is 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So you introduce sine of theta and cosine of theta. That overly complicates the equation. Let's solve the equation for the double angle this time. 
So let's try to isolate the trigonometric function on one side of the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by 2. So you have 2 times sine of 2 theta is equal to negative square root 3. If you divide both sides of the equation by 2, you have sine of 2 theta is equal to negative square root 3 divided by 2. And so now let's find out. What are the angles that actually will give you the sine function of that angle is negative square root 3 divided by 2? Since the sine function is a negative value, that actually occurs only in quadrants 3 or 4. And so the angle 2 theta, the argument of the sine function, must be in quadrants 3 or 4. If it's in quadrant 3, the angle is 4 pi divided by 3. And if it's in quadrant 4, the angle 2 theta must be 5 pi over 3. So the general solution would be 2 times theta is 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, or, in other words, you also have 2 times theta is 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, because the period of the sine function is 2 pi radians. The sine function will repeat its output values every 2 pi radians. However, we're trying to find out what are the values of theta that actually makes the equation a true statement, not 2 theta. So now, let's divide both sides of the equation by 2 to isolate the variable theta on one side of the equation. So if you divide 4 pi over 3 by 2, you actually get 2 pi over 3. And if you also divide 2 pi k divided by 2, you get pi k. So the general solution for just the value theta would be theta is 2 pi over 3 plus pi k, where k is an integer. And again, if you take 2 theta is equal to 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, and you divide both sides of the equation by 2, you can isolate the variable theta on one side of the equation. So theta will be equal to 5 pi over 3 divided by 2 will give you 5 pi over 6, plus 2 pi k divided by 2 will just give you pi k, because the 2's will cancel out. And so the general solution will be theta is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus pi k, where k is an integer. That's the general solution to the equation. 2 times sine of 2 theta is equal to negative square root 3. However, we're trying to find out all the angles theta between 0 and 2 pi that are solutions. So let's find out. If k is equal to 0, then we actually get the solution theta equals 2 pi over 3. And if k equals 0, you also get the angle theta is 5 pi over 6. So theta equals 2 pi over 3 and theta equals 5 pi over 6. Those are both solutions between 0 and 2 pi. However, if you also let k equals 1, then you have theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus pi. That actually will still be less than 2 pi, so that's actually a solution between 0 and 2 pi. So theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus pi will actually give you 5 pi over 3. So that's actually also a solution for the value of theta. And for the same reason, if you let k equals 1 for the other general solution, theta equals 5 pi over 6 plus pi, you actually get 11 pi over 6 for the value of theta. So theta can be 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3, or 11 pi over 6. Each of these four angles are between 0 and 2 pi, and they actually solve the original trigonometric equation. So you have four solutions to the trigonometric equation between 0 and 2 pi radians. So let's try another one. Number two, this time the equation is square root three times tangent of the argument three theta plus one is equal to zero. And this time the angle theta is between zero and pi, where theta can be zero, but not including theta equals pi. So again, we're going to try to isolate the trigonometric function on one side of the equation. So you have square root three times tangent three theta plus one is equal to zero. Subtract one on the right side of the equation first. So you have square root three times tangent of three theta is equal to negative one. And now if you want to get the tangent function isolated on one side of the equation, divide both sides of the equation by square root three. So tangent of three theta is equal to negative one divided by square root three. Or if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root three divided by square root three, you have tangent of three theta is equal to negative square root three divided by three. Well, since tangent is a negative value, that only only occurs in quadrants 2 and 4. So the angle in quadrant 2 where tangent is actually negative square root 3 divided by 3 is the value 5 pi over 6. So the angle 3 theta can be 5 pi over 6 plus pi k because that's the period of the tangent function is actually pi radians for the period of the tangent function. So you have 3 theta is 5 pi over 6 plus pi k where k is an integer. Or the angle where tangent is actually negative square root 3 divided by 3 in quadrant 4 is actually 11 pi over 6. So the angle 3 theta can be 11 pi over 6 plus pi k where k is an integer. However, we're not solving for 3 theta, we're trying to find out the values of theta that actually will solve the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by 3 to actually find out what are the values of theta that actually will solve the equation. So you divide both sides of the equation by 3, you have 5 pi over 6 divided by 3 will become 5 pi over 18, and if you have pi k divided by 3, that will be pi k divided by 3, where k is an integer. And also, if 3 theta is 11 pi over 6 plus pi k, divide both sides of the equation by 3, you have 11 pi divided by 6, divided by 3 will be 11 pi over 18, and if you have pi k divided by 3, you have a pi k divided by 3, where k is an integer. So the general solution to the trigonometric equation will be theta is equal to 5 pi over 18 plus pi k over 3, where k is an integer, or theta is 11 pi over 18 plus pi k over 3, where k is an integer. Well, if k equals 0, you actually have solutions between 0 and pi. 
So if k equals 0, you have theta is equal to 5 pi over 18. That's one of the solutions. Or if k equals 0 for the other general solution, you have theta equals 11 pi over 18. That's another solution to the trigonometric equation. However, if you let k equals 1, you actually get another solution to the trigonometric equation. You have theta is equal to 5 pi over 18 plus pi divided by 3 times 1. If you let k equals 1, that actually will give you 11 pi divided by 18 if you get a common denominator of 18 as the LCD. Well, we already have theta equals 11 pi over 18 as a solution. However, if you let the other equation where you have k equals 1, you have 11 pi over 18 plus pi divided by 3 times 1. That actually will give you 17 pi divided by 18 after you get a common denominator of 18 as the LCD. So theta equals 5 pi over 18, 11 pi over 18, or 17 pi over 18. These are the only three angles between 0 and pi radians that actually will solve the equation square root 3 times tangent of 3 theta plus 1 is equal to 0. So let's try number three. This time the equation is two times sine of three theta, subtract one is equal to zero. And again, the value for theta must be between zero and two pi, where theta can be zero, but not equal to two pi. So again, we're gonna try to get the trigonometric function isolated on one side of the equation. So you have two times sine of three theta, subtract one equals zero, add one to the right side of the equation. So you have two times sine of three theta is equal to positive one. And now divide both sides of the equation by two to isolate the sine of three theta on one side of the equation. So you have sine of three theta is equal to positive one half. The sine function function is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So that means the angle 3 theta must be pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, because that's where the sine function is 1 half. It'd be the angle pi over 6 in quadrant 1. However, also in quadrant 2, the sine function is positive 1 half. That angle would be 5 pi over 6. So 3 theta can also be 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. And we're using 2 pi because that's the period of the sine function. The sine function will start repeating output values every two pi radians. But again, we're not solving for three theta. We're trying to find out what are the values of theta that actually will solve the trigonometric equation. So we're trying to get theta by itself on one side of the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by three. So you have theta on one side of the equation, pi divided by six, divided by 3 will become pi divided by 18, plus 2 pi k divided by 3 will be 2 pi k divided by 3, and again, k is an integer. So the theta can be pi over 18 plus 2 pi k divided by 3, where k is an integer. That's a general solution for the angle theta. And also, if you take the other equation, the, the other general solution, and you solve for theta, you have 5 pi divided by 6 divided by 3. That will give you 5 pi divided by 18. And then 2 pi k divided by 3 is also 2 pi k divided by 3, where k is an integer. So the other general solution would be theta is equal to 5 pi over 18 plus 2 pi k divided by 3, where k is an integer. So this is the general solution to the trigonometric equation. Two times sine of three theta subtract one equals zero. However, we're trying to find out the values of theta between zero and two pi that are solutions. So let's find out. If k equals zero, you actually have two solutions. You have theta equals pi divided by 18, so that's one of the solutions. And if you have the other equation, theta equals five pi over 18 plus two pi over three times zero, that will give you five pi over 18. Both of these angles, pi over 18 and phi pi over 18, are between zero and two pi. Now let's try whenever k equals 1. If k equals 1, you have theta is equal to pi over 18 plus 2 pi divided by 3 times 1. Well, that will be pi over 18 plus 2 pi over 3. That actually will give you 13 pi over 18 after you get a common denominator of 18 as the LCD. So that's also between 0 and 2 pi. So that's also a solution to the trigonometric equation. If you let k equals 1 in the other general solution, you have theta equals 5 pi over 18 plus 2 pi over 3 times 1. That will give you 17 pi over 18 after you get a common denominator of 18 as the LCD. And that's also between 0 and 2 pi. So that's also a solution to the trigonometric equation between 0 and 2 pi radians. Well, now let's try k equals 2. If k equals 2, you have theta is equal to pi over 18 plus 2 pi over 3 times 2. That will make the second term 4 pi over 3. So if pi over 18 plus 4 pi over 3 will actually give you 25 pi divided by 18 as the angle theta. And that's also between 0 and 2 pi radians. So that's also a solution for the value for theta. Now the other equation, if you have theta is equal to 5 pi over 18 plus if you let k equals 2, you have 2 times pi divided by 3 times 2. That will be 4 pi over 3 plus 5 pi over 18. That will give you an angle that's larger than or greater than 2 pi radians, which is outside the interval. So that angle will not be a solution inside the interval 0 to 2 pi. So there's five solutions of the trigonometric equation. 2 times sine of 3 theta subtract 1 equals 0. It's the angles theta equals pi over 18, 5 pi divided by 18, 13 pi over 18, 17 pi over 18, and also 25 pi divided by 18. Each of these values for theta are actually solutions between 0 and 2 pi 
and they also make the equation a true statement. So let's finish up with one more. Number four, we're going to solve the trigonometric equation, square root three times tangent of the argument theta divided by two, subtract one equals zero. And this time theta is between zero and two pi, where theta can be zero, but not equal to two pi. So this time we're involving a half angle of the tangent function, because it's tangent of theta divided by two. So we're going to treat this trigonometric function exactly the same way as the other three problems. We're going to try to isolate the trigonometric function on one side of the equation first. So if you have squared three times tangent of theta divided by two, then subtract one equals zero, add one to the right side of the equation to move it away from the tangent function. So you have squared three times tangent of theta divided by two is equal to positive one. Now divide both sides of the equation by squared three. So you have tangent of theta divided by two is equal to one divided by squared three. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by squared three divided by squared three, you have tangent of theta divided by two is equal to squared three divided by three. Well, tangent is actually a positive value in quadrants one and three. So we're gonna find out what is the angle in quadrant one and also the angle in quadrant three where tangent is squared three divided by three. Well, that means the angle theta divided by two is equal to the angle in quadrant one is pi over six, where tangent is squared three divided by three. So you have theta divided by two is equal to pi over six plus pi times k, where k is an integer. We're using pi because that's the period of the tangent function. And also in quadrant three, where tangent is squared three divided by three is the angle theta divided by two can also be seven pi divided by six plus pi times k, where k is an integer. Well, we're not solving for theta divided by two. We're trying to find out the values of theta that will actually solve the equation. That's between zero and two pi. So we need to get theta by itself. We need to multiply both sides of the equation by two this time. So we have theta divided by two times two will actually give us just theta. Pi divided by six times two will be two pi divided by six, which is pi over three after you simplify. Then pi times k times two will be two pi k, where k is an integer. So one of the general solutions is theta is equal to pi over three plus two pi k, where k is an integer. And then the other solution would be theta divided by two. If you multiply the left side of the equation by two, you just get theta by itself. Seven pi divided by six times two will be 14 pi divided by six. Or if you simplify, that'll be seven pi over three plus pi times k times two, will be two pi k, where k is an integer. Well notice, if you let k equal zero, then you only have one answer or one solution between zero and two pi radians for the value for theta. If you let k equal zero, the first equation, theta is equal to pi over three plus two times pi times zero would give you just pi over three, which is between zero and two pi. So one of the solutions is theta equals pi over three. However, if you let the other equation where you let k equal zero, you have theta is equal to seven pi over three plus two times pi times zero, that's just zero, plus seven pi over three, that's seven pi over three. However, seven pi divided by three is actually greater than two pi radians. So that's not actually a solution in this given interval. So it looks like you only have one solution. The only solution to the trigonometric equation between zero and two pi radians is the angle pi over three radians. So this finishes our video on solving trigonometric equations involving multiples of angles. We talked about how to solve trigonometric equations with multiple angles. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about systems of nonlinear equations.